Hey, what's up guys? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'll be showing you how to rebuild and replace the fork seals on the WPAER 48 forks. All right, so we've pulled these forks off of a 2017 Husqvarna TX300. Now there are several different models of the KTMs and Husqvarnas that are running this style of fork. So if you have the WP48 AER fork, this video will show you how to rebuild them. Now if you're not sure which type of fork you have, take a look at the fork caps. They're very different from a lot of the other suspensions that are out there. Now the right fork leg is going to be responsible for your valving. The left fork has the air spring in it. Now the procedure for rebuilding these two is very different from one another. So in this video, we're going to show you how. All right, so some tools that we're gonna to need to do this job, we've got a pick tool, a flathead screwdriver, and a 3 8 drive ratchet with 19 millimeter socket. Now some specialty tools that you'll need are a 48 millimeter fork seal driver. We've got our Motion Pro fork seal bullet. Then we have our Tusk fork cap compression tool as well as our Tusk fork cap wrench. Also, you're gonna need the digital air pump. Now some replacement parts are the fork seals, the oil and some contact cleaner to clean up as we go. It's also nice to have some safety glasses, some rubber gloves, as well as a drain pan. And as always, be sure to reference your service manual for procedures and specs. All right, now to begin, we're gonna start with the right fork leg. Make sure it's nice and clean, free of dirt, so that when we disassemble it, we're not gonna get any of that inside. Take out the rubber cap that's at the bottom of the fork, rebound out your clickers to the full soft position, count the number of clicks, so that when we go back together, you can put them back to their original settings. Now we can take our fork and place it into our vise with soft jaws. All right, now we can take and grab our fork cap tool and we're gonna loosen up the fork cap. Now, if you don't have a vise, while this is in the fork leg, you can loosen the top triple clamp bolts, take your fork cap wrench and crack this free. All right, with this loose, we can pull it out of the vise, take it over to the drain pan and pour out the oil. All right, then we can take and re-thread the fork cap into the outer tube temporarily, and we'll place the bottom part of the fork back into the vise. Now we can take our driver with 19 millimeter socket and remove the center cap from the base of the fork. Now I've placed a drain pan underneath this to catch any oil that may come out. All right, so now we can take the fork out of the vise. We're gonna unthread the fork cap. Now we've placed some rags here so that we can lay the parts out in the order that they are removed from the fork. Then we can pull out the inner chamber. Now we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver and we're gonna place it in between the seal and the outer chamber. And just kind of pry it out. All right, so now we're gonna take our pick tool and we're gonna work out the snap ring that's inside of here, just like that. And we'll slide this up out of the way. All right, so for this next part, we're gonna take and pull the inner tube from the outer tube. So we're gonna be using a slide hammering motion to get the seal to come out. All right, so now we're gonna take off our guide bushings and the rest of the parts that are here. So we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver, we're gonna place it into the end opening of the guide bushing and just slide it up off of the fork tube like that. Now it's a good idea to lay these parts out in the order that they're removed from the fork tube. And once again, make sure to lay out the parts in the order that they are removed. All right, for the next step, we're gonna take the inner cartridge and we'll place it into the vise. Now, when we set this in here, we're not gonna apply a whole lot of pressure, just enough to hold it in position. All right, so now we can take our compression cap tool, we'll place it over the fork cap here. Then we can take our fork cap wrench and we're gonna break these two loose.
Then we can pull this out. All right, so now we can pull out the cartridge, take it over to our drain pan and drain the oil. Cycle the inner rod a few times to make sure you get all the old oil out. All right, so now we can take 12.85 ounces of suspension fluid and measure it out. Then we're gonna take our cartridge here, we're gonna pull the inner rod out so that it's in its full position. We'll fill it with some suspension fluid and then we'll cycle the rod in and out several times so that we can bleed the cartridge so it's free of air. All right, so now we can take our cartridge, place it into the vise with soft jaws and we're gonna tighten this just enough so it'll hold into fixed position. Then we can take our cartridge center bolt here, we're gonna place it into the cartridge and once we get this threaded on, we're gonna to torque it to 29.5 foot-pounds. All right, so once you get the center bolt installed and torqued, we're gonna take and cycle the inner rod, fully compress it, and then we're gonna allow for it to rebound on its own, and it should do so to its full extended position. Now, if it doesn't do that, you'll need to do the re-bleeding process. Now we can take our inner and outer fork tubes and prep them for assembly. Now, to do that, we're gonna take some contact cleaner, we're gonna clean up our inner and outer tubes, then spray them off with some air to make sure they're very clean. Then we need to inspect this outer surface here. We're gonna take our fingernail, We'll run it along the length of the tube and anything that can catch your fingernail, such as a, a dent or ding, can compromise the seal. Now, if you have one of those, take some Scotch-Brite, polish it out. Once it's polished, take your fingernail, run it over the damaged area. As long as it doesn't catch your fingernail, you should be in good shape. Now, we're about to begin installation, but before we do, there's a few things I want to point out about orientation of the oil seals. As you can see here, it's different on both sides. The side that's going to be facing the dirt has a lip that is protruding from it. Also, there are some stamping marks and possibly some numbers depending on the seals that you get. On the side that'll be facing the oil, it has a slight recess as well as a silver band that sits on the inside. This will face the oil. All right, now before we install our guide bushings, we want to give them a good inspection. These are coated with Teflon. Now, if it has worn through, you're going to see some discoloration. Also check for chunks of it missing or aluminum embedding itself into it. Make sure you give them a thorough inspection, and if they're damaged, make sure you replace them. All right, now for reassembly, we're going to start with our Motion Pro seal bolt. This is going to help protect the oil seal as we install it onto the inner tube. So this is just going to mount on the top here. It's going to slide over these sharp edges and help protect that seal. Now we're going to take our dust seal, and we'll take a little bit of suspension oil, we'll lube the inside of the seal. And we can place it onto the inner tube here. Slide it down. Next is our snap ring. And then our new oil seal. Again, lube up the inner diameter with some suspension oil. Just like that. And we can pull this off. Next, we can install the stopper ring, which is this big washer, followed by our inner guide bushing. And last, the additional bushing. Just like that. All right, so now we can get ready to drive the fork seals. Now we're gonna take our inner tube, place it into the outer, I like to have the outer tube sitting on a nice solid surface like a table. We're going to let our bushings drop into place along with the ring. Then we'll slide the oil seal into position. Then we'll take our fork seal driver and drive the seal. You hear that change in pitch? That lets us know that our fork seal's bottomed out inside of there. So it's seated. Next is our snap ring. 
Now with our snap ring, we're gonna, we're gonna seat it down inside of there. You'll have to compress it so it'll fit, get it started. Then you can take your pick tool and we're just gonna work our way around and make sure it gets seated into its position. Give it a good inspection. Looks like we're in good shape. Now for the dust seal, we're just gonna take and slide hammer this together, just like that. Now our dust seal is set. All right, so now we're gonna take our cartridge, we'll slide it into the fork tube assembly. We're gonna th temporarily thread on the fork cap, then we'll place the bottom end of the forks into our vise with soft jaws. Now before we install the lower center bolt, we need to inspect the base of the fork. So look inside like you're looking inside of the tube, and you wanna make sure that the lower end of the cartridge is fully seated in the base of the lower part of the fork. If it is not, you wanna apply just a little bit of pressure, twist the fork tube, and it should slide into position. Now we're ready to install the lower fork center bolt. You wanna to torque this to 33.2 foot pounds. All right, so now we can unthread the fork cap, add seven ounces of suspension oil to the outer part of the tube, rethread the fork cap into place, and then we will torque it to 36.9 foot pounds. All right, so now we can take and put our clicker adjustments back into their original settings. We can place the rubber cover on the bottom side of the fork. Then we're done with the right side, and now we can move on to the left. All right, so now onto the left fork. To start, make sure it's clean and free of any dirt or debris. Next, we're going to remove the rubber cap that's at the base of the fork. Then we need to depress the Schrader valve. To do that, we need to take off this cap, depress the Schrader valve, and release the air pressure. Now make sure to have some safety glasses on because there is more than 100 pounds of PSI behind this fork. All right, next we can take the assembly. We're gonna place it into our vise. Then we can crack the cap loose and unthread it. Then we can pull it from the vise. We're gonna slide down the outer tube and empty out the oil. All right, now we can take and re-thread the fork cap temporarily into the outer tube. Then we can place the lower end of the forks back into the vise. Then we can take and remove the lower center bolt. All right, now the center bolt may be a little difficult to get to come out, so I'll just take and compress on the suspension, and it should be helpful in getting it out. All right, so we can take it out of the vise, then we're going to unthread the fork cap. and we can pull out the inner chamber. Unless your inner air chamber isn't holding air pressure, you won't need to do anything with it, so we're just gonna set this aside. Now when it comes to the other part of the fork, the inner and outer tube, we're going to tear it down just like the other fork, pull the dust seal snap ring, slide hammer it apart. Once it's all torn down, we'll service it just like the other fork and then put it back together the exact same way.
All right, so now that we've got our fork tube reassembled, we can take the inner cartridge, slide it into place, temporarily rethread the fork cap, place it into our vise, and then we can insert the center bolt and torque it. Now, just like the other fork tube, the inner rod needs to seat inside of the lower section of the inner tube here. So to get it to do that, again, apply a little bit of pressure and turn it, and you should feel it click into place. Then we can install the center bolt and we'll torque to 33.2 foot-pounds. All right, so next we're going to unthread the fork cap and we're gonna add seven ounces of suspension oil. Once we've added our suspension oil, we can take and place this back into the vise. We're gonna to torque our cap to 36.9 foot-pounds. All right, so now that we've got this filled with oil, the cap torque to spec, we need to add some air pressure to it. So the stock air pressure for this is 139 PSI and to do that, we're gonna be using our Tusk digital air pump. So we can just take the digital air pump Thread it on to the air valve here. We're going to pump this up to 139 PSI. Now, when you release this valve, you're going to hear a little bit of air depress, but that's just the air that's built up inside of this hose, so you don't have to worry about loosening any air out of the chamber. The last step, install the cap. and your forks are good to go. All right, and that's it. That's how you rebuild and replace the fork seals on the WPAER 48 forks. Now, all the special tools and parts that we used here today can be found on our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com, so be sure to check that out. And also to see our YouTube channel, subscribe for more of our how-tos, product spotlights, and tests. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching, and keep turning those wrenches.